Hello students. Today we are going to learn the very important and interesting topic of liposomes. Liposomes are acquiring great importance in the pharmaceutical industry and have been found to be very useful in the design of several drug delivery systems which are used to target drugs to particular tissue. This is because of the structural similarity between the lipid bilayer and the cell membrane. Liposomes can easily penetrate through the cell membrane to deliver the drugs to such tissues, organs and sites where the drug cannot penetrate easily as such. Also, drugs can be used to encapsulate both hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic drugs and therefore are of prime importance as drug carriers in drug delivery. This technology has been found to be useful for the treatment of several diseases. The main advantages of liposomes are that they are biocompatible and can be used for applications ranging from delivering enzymes, antibacterial drugs, antiviral drugs, antiparasitic drugs, transdermal transporters, fungicides, diagnostic tools, and they have also been used as adjuvant for the vaccine. In today's lecture, we will focus on the advantages and applications of liposomes, their methods of manufacture, as well as their evaluation techniques. Let us now look at the structure of a liposome. A liposome is a microvesicle that is composed of a bilayer of lipid amphipathic molecules with an aqueous core. The diagrammatic representation of the liposome is shown here below where you can see the bilayer of the amphipathic molecule in this case a phospholipid which is in the form of a sphere. The inner compartment is hollow and can be used to enclose a drug in an aqueous medium. The bilayer is composed of two layers of phospholipids so aligned that the hydrophilic head of the phospholipid is oriented inwards towards the core or is oriented outwards towards the medium. The hydrophobic regions are enclosed within this bilayer. Such liposomes are formed when the phospholipids are hydrated. In the presence of water, the phospholipids align themselves first in sheets of bilayers side by side with the heads up and the tails down. The sheets then join tail to tail to form the bilayer and enclose water in the center of the layer. Thus, single layered sheets are formed first which then, orient, which then form bilayer and orient themselves in the form of spheres enclosing the aqueous layer in the center of the the, in the center of the liposome. Several such bilayers, concentric bilayers may be formed one inside the other giving rise to a multi-laminar lamellar structure of concentric phospholipid spheres which are separated by layers of water. Thus, we see that the major component of the liposomes are phospholipids which are also uh, present in the cell membrane and therefore this helps the liposomes to avoid detection and subsequent destruction. The phospholipid commonly present in lipo uh, liposomes is phosphatidylcholine as well as cholesterol. Phosphatidylcholine is an amphipathic molecule which has a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head. The hydrophobic tail consists of a pair of hydrophobic acyl hydrocarbon chains connected via glycerol bridge to hydrophilic polar head group and is depicted in the next diagram. You, as you can see the diagrammatic representation of phosphatidylcholine, it has two regions, the hydrophilic region which is the head. And the head consists of the phosphocholine group attached to a phosphate group. This hydrophilic region is attached to the hydrophobic region by means of a glyceryl backbone. And the hydrophobic region consists of fatty acid chains. So this is an amphiphilic molecule which is responsible for formation of the liposome. 
the phosphatidylcholine molecules by nature are insoluble in water but when added to water align themselves in planar bilayered sheets wherein minimal undesirable interaction takes place between the bulk aqueous fluid and the fatty acid chain when these sheets completely fold onto themselves they form sealed vesicles which looks like a uh, ball and the interaction between the hydrophobic region and the aqueous layer now is zero however these phosphatidylcholine molecules form bilayers but not micelles this is because of the presence of long fatty chain acids which cannot fold onto themselves so therefore the overall molecular looks tubular in shape the overall molecule is, which is uh, phosphatidylcholine is tubular in shape and cannot fold onto itself to form micelles but can form bilayers which ultimately forms a sphere the other important component of liposomes is cholesterol which is incorporated into the phospholipid bilayers with the hydroxyl group oriented outwards towards that is towards the aqueous phase and inwards towards the aqueous core and the aliphatic chains are aligned parallel to the acyl chain this cholesterol help to increase the separation between the phosphatidylcholine head groups and eliminate electrostatic and hydrogen bonding interactions they thus stabilize the liposomal structure Cholesterol acts as a fluidity buffer because below the phase transition point it tends to make the membrane less ordered and above the transition point it helps to make the membrane more ordered and thus suppresses the tilts and shifts in the membrane structure at the phase transition temperature cholesterol can be incorporated into the phospholipid membrane in very high concentrations as high as 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 1 molar ratio being an amphipathic molecule cholesterol is easily inserted into the membrane with its hydroxyl group oriented towards the aqueous phase that is both outside as well as inside towards the core and the alif alif fatic chain gets aligned parallel to the acyl chain and is present in the center of the bilayer where it cannot come in contact with the water on the aqueous environment on either side however the concentration of cholesterol above 50% is very difficult to incorporate into the phosphatidylcholine um, layer without disrupting the bilayer configuration and the conventional linear structure because it reduces the number of specific intermolecular interaction the role of cholesterol in liposomes is to prevent leakage of the encapsulated drug from the liposome increase mechanical rigidity of the bilayer decrease the phase transition temperature and thus stabilize the structure increase trans transfection efficiency of nucleic acids by the liposomes the given on this slide is given a structure of phosphatidylcholine a diagrammatic representation is given where you can see the hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tail region as you can see the hydrophobic tail region is very long and thus prevents the bending and formation of micelles by the phosphatidylcholine group rather bilayers are first formed which then orient themselves to give a stable spherical structure also known as the liposome in this diagram you can see a transverse section of the liposome where you can see the spherical ring that is formed by the liposome so initially a lipid flat planar lipid bilayer structure is formed but as more and more phosphatidylcholine keeps on adding ultimately a concentric ring is formed this is followed by formation of a spherical structure where you can see the hydrophilic uh, groups on the outside of the sphere and hydrophilic groups on the inside of the sphere the inside of this spherical structure is hollow and can be used to en entrap drug in an aqueous solution moving forward what are the advantages of such liposomal drug products such liposomal drug products can be custom designed 
because of difference, different uh, content of lipid or the size of the uh, lipid used or the surface chart as well as the method of preparation. Depending on the requirements, liposomes can be designed. They help to protect the drug from early degradation because the drug is present securely in the core of the liposome. Because they can penetrate the cell membrane easily and carry the drug, they help in improving the bioavailability of the drug as well as improving the therapeutic efficacy. Since larger amount of drug can reach the target site, they help in reducing the dosing frequency of the drug. They can increase the shelf life of the drug as the drug is protected from the external environment. Such liposomes can also be used for targeting of drugs by attaching homing molecules onto their outer surface. Liposomes can be used to deliver active ingredients to the site of application, especially in case of cosmetics and can retain the active ingredient for a longer period of time at the target site. The main function of liposomes when they are used as drug carriers is their use in solubilization of liposomal drugs, utility in protecting the drug from metabolic enzymes, efficient targeting of drugs to the desired site of action. Also, these liposomes being thermodynamically unstable undergo phagocytosis when they come in contact with the immune system, immune cells. This can lead to the internalization of liposomes, the subsequent degradation and release of drug in the, in the immune cell. Such liposomes help in prolonging the duration of action. Liposomes have been found to have reproducible physicochemical and biopharmaceutical characteristics. These liposomes, because they are made up of phospholipids, are biodegradable and non-toxic. They are used as carriers for both hydrophilic and lipophilic drugs. And they help in stabilization of proteins. Let us now look at the classification of liposomes. Liposomes can be classified based on the number of lamellae or vesicles formed as well as the size. The vesicles that are formed may vary in size, in the bilayer rigidity, bilayer geometry as well as charge. One of the ways by which classification can be done is based on the uh, number of vesicles. So we have small unilamellar vesicles wherein only one uh, single vesicles are formed and the size ranges from 20 to 40 nanometer. Then there are medium unilamellar vesicles whose size ranges from 40 to 80 microns and there are large unilamellar vesicles whose size is as large as 100 to 1000 nanometer. Then there are multilamellar vesicles as shown here in the diagram which have several bio uh, several bilayers compartmentalized one in one in another. So the, they differ by the way in which they are prepared and the way in which they appear. Finally, we have multi vesicular vesicles wherein a large number of vesicles are enclosed within a single larger vesicle. So, small unilamellar vesicles size 25 to 100 nanometers and consist of a single lipid bilayer. Large unilamellar vesicles with larger size, single vesicle, so the size is as large as 100 to 400 nanometer. Multilamellar vesicles or MLV whose size may range from 200 microns to several microns and they consist of two or more concentric layers. Multivesicular vesicles which contain several vesicles enclosed within a large unilamellar vesicles. Vesicles whose size is above 1 micron are called as giant vesicles. So this was the classification of liposomes based on the size of the vesicle. Liposomes can also be classified based on the site to which they are targeting and these are classified as conventional liposomes which can which are do not have any modification. Stealth liposomes which are modified by, by their surface being hidden from the immune cells 
by the uh, by uh, virtue of coating with an agent such as polyethylene glycol and liposomes on which homing devices such as anti antibodies are attached to convert them into homing devices which will target particular sites or of tissues cells or organs based on uh, their exposure to the immune cells especially the mononuclear phagocytic system uptake and coating liposomes can also be classified as plain or modified mps targeted that is targeted towards the immune cell or mps avoiding now we proceed to the manufacture of liposomes we will discuss here the simplest uh, method of manufacture of liposomes in the laboratory so far we know that structurally the liposomes consist of phospholipids of which phosphatidylcholine or phosphatidylglycerol is an important uh, phos uh, uh, phosphatidyl uh, phosphocholine then we have cholesterol and lecithin so the three important components that are used in the manufacture of liposomes include cholesterol lecithin and phosphatidylcholine in the ratio of 1 is to 0.9 is to 1 these are mixed together these are dissolved in organic solvent and the three solutions are mixed together to get you get the solution of cholesterol lecithin and phosphatidylglycerol in organic solvent this is then dried in the form of a thin film and this film is dispersed in water because these are amphiphatic molecules all the three cholesterol lecithin and phosphatidylcholine the moment they come in contact with water they destabilize and in order to stabilize they start forming the planar bilayered structure which then orients itself to form a liposome suspension in water if the water or the aqueous phase in which this liposome is formed contains drug cell in solution while formation simul, while uh, formation of the liposome a small amount of this water containing the drug gets entrapped in the core of the liposome and thus the drug is now enclosed in a liposome so the organic phase which is shown here is consists of lecithin generally egg lecithin phosphatidylcholine uh, cholesterol and phosphatidylcholine in the ratio of 0.9 is to 1 is to 0.1 and the organic phase used is chloroform is to methanol in the ratio of 2 is to 1 the next step is drying to form a thin film and this is carried out in a rotary vacuum evaporator at a temperature of 20 to 40 degrees centigrade under a pressure of 400 to 700 milligrams of mercury this is uh, the drying is basically carried out by rapid rotation of the solvent in a rotary vacuum evaporator and a thin film is formed on the surface of the flask of the rotary vacuum evaporator finally water is added into the rotary vacuum evaporator where a dried film of the uh, lipids is present of the phospholipids is present and the simultaneous formation of liposome takes place by either physical dispersion solvent dispersion or by the detergent solubilization technique in the previous slide we have seen the general technique of preparation of the uh, liposomes the organic phase which is the phospholipids were dissolved in the organic solvent and the solvent was removed by use, using the rot rotary vacuum evaporator the thin film formed was then introduced into the aqueous medium to form the uh, to form the liposomes simultaneously here we are going to discuss the various techniques of dispersion of the dried film in water the first and the simplest technique is that of the hand shaking method this method is most widely used here the lipid mixture and the components are dissolved in chloroform methanol mixture and the mixture is then introduced into a round bottom flask and the rotary vacuum evaporator is used to remove the organic solvents at 30 degrees centigrade the resultant dry residue which is formed at the walls of the flask is the, uh, is then 
removed and the evaporator is removed and fixed onto the lyophilizer to remove any traces of residual solvent. A milky white uh, water is then introduced into the rotary vacuum evaporator and rotated till a milky white suspension is formed. Thus, either water or saline phosphate buffer is introduced into the rotary vacuum evaporator flask and this is used for hydration of the dried film. The rotary vacuum, the rotary flask is then rotated and a milky white solution is formed which is nothing but a colloidal suspension of the liposomes. It is then allowed to stand at room temperature to complete the swelling process and the resultant liposomes are multilaminar vesicles. The second technique that we are going to study here is called the non-shaking method. It is similar to the shaking method except the, there is no shaking involved in the, during the swelling. The solution of the lipid in chloroform or and methanol mixture is kept at the bottom of the conical flask and gradual evaporation of the organic solvent takes place to form the dried film at the bottom of the conical flask. After drying, nitrogen is passed through the, uh, through the flask to remove any traces of the organic solvent and to obtain a completely dried film. After which nitrogen gas saturated with water is now passed over this dried film. And finally, aqueous medium is added to the dried flask. The flask is then tilted to one side and allowed to hydrate. The solution is very gently, the solution of drug in water is very gently run, run over the lipid layer that is present at the bottom of the flask and the flask is flushed with nitrogen and stored for two hours to help in the swelling process. The vesicles so formed are then mixed to give you a milky suspension of liposomes. The suspension is centrifuged at uh, 1200 rpm for 10 minutes to get a layer of multilamellar vesicles which float on the trough and the larger unilamellar vesicles at the bottom. So the multilamellar vesicles at the top which are lighter are removed and the large unilamellar vesicles from the bottom uh, which, uh, which form a pellet at the bottom are then collected, isolated, washed and dried. The next approach that we are going to look at is the pro-liposome approach for synthesis of multilamellar vesicles. The pro-liposome approach was developed as a simple, reproducible, reliable manufacturing technique for large-scale manufacture of liposome dispersions. This technology is based on the intrinsic property of hydrated membrane lipids to form vesicles on contact with water. This involves the layering of phospholipids onto a finely divided particulate support resulting in the formation of dry powders. When these dry powders are wetted and gently mixed, the phospholipids on the solid support will rapidly disperse to give a liposomal suspension in aqueous solution. Such liposomes can be formed in vivo under the influence of physiological fluids or can be formed in vitro prior to administration by using a suitable liquid. In the example stated here, the solid support used is sorbitol powder which is introduced into the flask of the rotary evaporator and gentle tumbling is carried out. The organic lipid solution is introduced in small quantities in the form of a spray and it gets added and adsorbed onto the sorbitol powder to give a dry powder of sorbitol which is coated onto the surface with the lipid solution. Complete drying of uh, and uh, removal of the organic phase is carried out by lyophilization. Such completely dried powder consists of the solid support which is sorbitol on which the lipid phospholipid molecules are uh, entrapped. These, this dried powder is then filled into vials flushed with nitrogen to remove all traces of moisture and seal. When necessary, the aqueous medium is introduced into this vial and this aqueous medium contains the drug solution. 
spontaneous formation of the liposomes takes place upon wetting of the solid wetting and dissolution of the solid support this is because the phospholipids that are adsorbed onto the surface of the sorbitol are wetted and they orient themselves to a more stable structure that is bilayer which finally orients itself to form the liposomes another method of carrying out liposome manufacture is the freeze drying technique in which the lipid is dispersed in a finely divided form and aqueous media is added to freeze dry the lipid which is in the suitable solvent here the solvent used generally is tertiary butanol so lipids in the organic solvent are first freeze dried and then hydrated by addition of water or saline the multilamellar vesicles formed by these technique can be varied and modified with respect to their size entrapment efficiency vesicle lamellarity let us now look at the techniques of characterization of liposomes prepared by these techniques the physical properties of the liposomes can be evaluated by measuring the size of the liposomes determining the surface charge on the liposomes as well as the efficiency of formation uh, manufacture of liposomes by measuring the percent captured the size of the liposomes can be determined by electron microscopy laser light scattering technique or by the gel exclusion chromatography the charge on the surface of the liposomes can be uh, elucidated by electrophoresis on cellulose acetate plate in sodium borate buffer at a ph of 8.8 .8. the percent capture of uh, the drug by the liposomes can be determined by detecting the total amount of drug that is entrapped within the liposome this can be done by using the mini column centrifugation method or by the protamine aggregate method the number of lamella or lamellarity of the of the liposomes can be estimated by the freeze electron microscopy as well as nmr technique the phase behavior of the liposomes can be elucidated by detect uh, determining the crystalline state of the liposomes and comparing it with the liquid crystalline state by carrying out uh, by uh, exposing the liposomes to the phase transition temperature pc Deter determination of the phase transition temperature will help to understand the crystalline nature or the uh, liquid crystalline nature of the liposomes pc that is phase transition temperature indicates the liposomal stability permeability and whether the drug is entrapped in the bilayers or in the aqueous compartment if the drug is hydrophilic it will be present in the aqueous compartment and if the drug is hydrophobic it will be entrapped in the bilayers of the phospholipid this can be detected by the freeze fracture electron microscopic technique or by differential scanning calorimeter drug amount of drug released from the liposomes can be determined by carrying out in in vitro diffusion technique by using any of the diffusion cells that are reported in literature coming to the chemical properties of the phospholipids the quantitative determination of amount of phospholipids in the liposome is very difficult to determine because of the presence of residual solvent however there are two techniques uh, which are used that is the barlett assay and the stewart assay in the barlett assay the phosphate formed by the breakdown of phospholipids can be measured spectrophotometrically and in the stewart assay the phospholipids are allowed to complex with ammonium ferrothiocyanate and then can be determined phospholipids can be hydrolyzed for example lecithin if present in the liposome can be hydrolyzed to uh, lysolecithin and this can be determined by hp hplc phosphatidylcholine can be hydrolyzed to lysophosphatidylcholine and it, this cannot be estimated by hplc as the amount of fatty acids is not known lysophosphatidylcholine can further be broken down to phosphate which is separated by tlc and then estimated by scanning densitometry 
phospholipids can be oxidized via free radical chain mechanism and can be measured by uv method or tba method or iodometric method and as well as glc method Cholesterol, uh, uh, the amount of cholesterol can be analyzed by reacting the liposome with a re reagent that contains iron. The cholesterol ion complex can be measured for, uh, colorimetrically at 610 nanometer. As the liposomes are not are thermodynamically unstable, they may undergo physical degradation and or chemical degradation. Under physical degradation, aggregation or fuse, fusion or leakage of contents may be seen whereas chemical degradation is uh, obvious if the liposomes uh, or the phospholipids undergo oxidation or hydrolysis. Therefore, the liposomes need to be protected against chemical degradation and physical degradation. Protection against chemical degradation can be done by starting with freshly purified lipids as well as freshly uh, dissolved solvents. High temperatures are to be avoided during processing. Manufacturing to be carried out in the absence of oxygen which is why a nitrogen atmosphere and nitrogen flushing is very necessary. Deoxygenation of the aqueous solution is necessary. Liposome suspensions should be stored under nitrogen blanket. The formulation should contain antioxidants such as alpha tocopherol. Chelating agents may be added to retard the process of oxidation and saturated lipids should be preferred over unsaturated lipids. In order to prevent physical degradation, the annealing should be carried out. Aggregation which takes place due to Van der Waals interaction can be minimized by imparting negative charge to the lipids so that they repel each other. Fusion which occurs uh, uh, to reduce the stress in the system can be overcome by adding cholesterol which is stabilizing agent and by use of chelating agents. Leakage of contents of the vesicle can be reduced by using the high molar ratio of cholesterol. Polar groups on liposomes undergo cross-linking and this cross-linking can be reduced to The polar groups on the liposomes undergo cross-linking by processes such as glutaraldehyde fixation and increase the mechanical strength of the membranes and make them less susceptible to disruption by the serum components. Finally, we come to the application of liposomes. Since these liposomes can avoid, uh, they can pass through the cell membrane and avoid uh, uptake by the immune cells, they can be used for intracellular uptake and help in uh, treatment of uh, microbial diseases. Reduction of uh, met, uh, metal ion uptake, gene man they help in gene manipulation, tumor cell destruction and activation of macrophages as well as can be used in vaccine therapy. The slow release of the drug near target area is possible by encapsulating the drug in such liposomes and therefore the tumor cells can be targeted by the macrophages. Liposomes act as circulating reservoirs and can be used for blood component substitution. My liposomes facilitate drug, uh, drug uptake by certain routes such as the skin, the lung, eyes, mucosal tissues. Thus, liposomes have great utility as carriers for drug molecules and uh, suitable design and manipulation of liposomes can help in uh, treatment of several conditions. For more information, you can go through the video links which are uh, uploaded by me on the Google Classroom as well as the notes that are circulated. Thank you.